the best boxing content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and punch that bell for notifications. Well, there was a moment in time after James Tony knocked out Tim Littles and then beat up Prince Charles Williams in 1994 when some experts regarded him as the number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the sport. But that was exactly the moment at which he allowed his weight to balloon to 214, had to lose more than 40 pounds in a period of less than four weeks to get ready for the fight against Jones and came in in a listless performance that was partially his fault, partially, of course, Jones's dominance. Here's a closer look at James Tony. Old school, trained as Emmanuel told you earlier, voiceover by the veteran trainer Bill Miller of Detroit. James Tony knows as many of the old fight tricks as any fighter in the game. No more young and dumb, he says, acknowledging that his lifestyle took him out of the boxing elite back in the day when he was fighting Jones and others of his ilk. Unbeaten with four losses, James Tony, despite the four losses on his record, insists to us that nobody's ever really beaten him face to face. He's beaten himself with his bad habits, but he's never really, in his view, lost a fight. That's the kind of arrogance that makes Tony the fighter that he is. And meanwhile, here's Vasily Giroff. He's known mostly as a body puncher, Manny, but expand on this point. You say you trained him, and he's a hard puncher with both hands, not just the left. He punches hard with both hands, and he's a very busy fighter. And, uh, cumulative, he can wear you down and hurt you. With Tony, will wear you down, maybe, but it's not so much a puncher as compared to this guy here. But I just, the one thing is, I just don't know if he gets whacked pretty good by Tony, if he can take the punches. If they end up having a slug fest, whether he can take the punch, even though he's a good puncher himself. And a closer look at the Russian Tiger, Vasily Girov, banking on the bread basket. He plans to go right at James Tony's belly and determine whether Tony's lifestyle deficiencies have left him with a deficit in being able to stay in tough competition. 14-month layoff for Girov, who's been plagued by problems with a former manager, financial and legal problems. His trainers worry somewhat about rust, but they say this kind of fighter will get his rhythm back in a hurry. Kasak from Paradise. He had a very difficult upbringing in Kazakhstan, where the national team coach put him through extraordinarily difficult training regimens. Then two weeks after the Olympics in 96, moved to the Valley of the Sun in Phoenix and has lived more or less in American paradise ever since. That's still Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go up to Michael Buffer for the official introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF Cruiserweight Championship of the World. Brought to you by DeBella Entertainment in association with Foxwoods Resort and Casino of Mashantucket, Connecticut. The King of Beers, Budweiser, and Perfect Ten Magazine, along with Goose and Tudor Promotions. This contest is sanctioned by the Mashantucket Pequot Tribal Nation Athletic Commission, Chairman Joey Carter, Vice Chairman Richard Butler. The scoring will be done on a 10-point system, and the three judges at ringside will be Glenn Feldman, Melvina Lathan, and Steve Weisfeld. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action working for the 105th time in a world title bout, Steve Smoger. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Foxwoods, DeBella Entertainment, and HBO Sports, we dedicate and salute the men and women who serve and sacrifice with valor and honor. Our heroes, the members of the armed forces of the United States of America. And now, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, Wearing black and his official weight stands at 190 pounds. He has an outstanding professional career, 65 victories, including 42 knockouts with four defeats and one bout even. From the Motor City, Detroit, Michigan, here is the challenger, the former seven-time world champion, James Lights Up Tony. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner. 
Wearing tiger stripes, he officially weighs 188 pounds. Since capturing Olympic gold in 1996, yeah. he has a perfect professional record consisting of 31 bouts, 31 victories, including 27 knockouts. From Bulgash, Kazakhstan, here is the reigning, defending, undefeated IBF cruiserweight champion of the world, Vasily the Tiger, Shiro. Thanks, Mike. All right, gentlemen, you were given your instructions to weigh in. Please obey my commands, respect the belt, and above all, protect yourself at all times. Trunks are good. Touch them up. Touch the gloves, gents. James, touch the man's glove. Thank you. Okay, thank you. James is coming in with an attitude already. Well, that's the man. <laughs> it's a cruiserweight fight. But the winner will, in all likelihood, try to call out a heavyweight after the fight. Not just any heavyweight, the one named Jones. One key tactical element, Vasily Giroff, as we mentioned, will bend over to try to go to James Tony's belly. Can Tony catch him with an uppercut and yes. change his life? Yes, he can. And also, I saw Giroff get hurt by a left hook. Some of observers say, and Emmanuel, I think I heard you say this earlier this evening, that you've never really seen James Tony hurt in the ne ring. Never saw him hurt, and for the most part, never saw him really beaten decisively. You know, just Roy beat him, because Roy was just Roy with his speed. But, uh, you know, James is fighting a smart fight right now. He's seemingly trying to shoot the straight right hand through the center, and gives very, very little of a target. And Giroff hasn't gotten to that bread basket yet. He throws right. one left into the belly. Giroff is having a lot of problems already trying to find a way to, to properly hit Tony. And, and, and it looks better for James at this stage right now than Giroff for the first. When we talk about old school. Look at Tony's use of his hands, his head, the way he rolls away from punches, the way he wraps the right hand. He does things that you might have seen in the 30s and 40s and not as much today. No, he uses every part of his body to protect himself. Maybe Bernard Hopkins is the one other fighter who shows you the same kinds of tricks that Tony will will foster during the fight. But more so, I think, uh, yeah, probably next, but I think James is probably leading it. The only thing, James has had a lot more wear and tear on him. Than Bernard. Best punch of the round, back Giroff off half a step. Giroff took it though, keeps coming. There's a left to the body by Giroff, the first one to really dig in. Tony shaking his head as if to say, you're not gonna hurt me with that. Giroff still can't find a comfortable angle to land punches him. Little right hand by Tony, back Giroff out. Giroff lands the left himself. Giroff jabbing, but kind of half-heartedly. Tony pops him with one in return. And you see the defensive skills of Tony there. Yeah, but, but Giroff is putting a lot of pressure on him. He's making him work a lot faster and more than he normally would work. Mental pressure from round to round, like few opponents have been able to do to James Tony. Yes, yes. Hard punches by Giroff there. Hard right hand by Tony. Backs Giroff up. Good Both round, guys good had round. their moments. Very good round. And I think it's going to get better as the fight goes on. Hey, look. Keep that down. Look. You got to keep hitting something. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Huh? Yeah. All right? Vaseline. See? Look. Keep hitting something. You know what I'm saying? And look. Remember, when he, when he plants that foot, step around. Yep. And get a clean shot. You got me? Yep, sir. All right. I feel. Okay. Why don't you use that jab a little bit more and use those pants? 
Alright? You've got to come back with more than one shot for me, okay? Alright? You came back with the one counter real nice, okay? You can come back with two, okay? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Behind the right hand, you want to go? Okay. Behind the right hand, put the left hook, right? Okay. Give me a drink. That's all right. Here's the one right hand counter by James Tony. Tony is one of the more effective and precise punches, but with the pace that Giroff is setting, if Tony doesn't knock him out, it's going to be pretty rough on him going down the stretch. And Giroff was the one who was landing combinations, and now Tony fighting hard off the ropes, and Giroff bangs him back into them. Yeah, Giroff is being very physical with James. Tommy Brooks and Thel Torrance training Giroff want him to go in and be the boss from the start. They don't want Tony to gather any confidence in the fight. You no, know, one of the things when you fight any fighter is you can make him fight at a little bit faster pace than he normally fights that you have a great advantage. Well thrown straight right hand by Tony. Giroff with a good left to the belly. Body shot him. Tony didn't like it. No. Nope. Now Giroff lands upstairs and blocks Tony's left. Small trickle of blood out of the right nostril of Vasily Giroff. No doubt the product of one of Tony's accurate counter shots. Tony's very accurate with his shots. Tony steps into a southpaw stance as Giroff rakes him with the left. Comes back with the right to the top of the head. Another right on the temple. Jab. Tony not throwing much. Giroff to the body. Giroff throwing more upstairs than Tony might have expected and landing. And even though he's not landing all of them, he's landing enough of them. And Tony is, I don't think, prepared for this pace. Vasily Giroff, despite a 14-month layoff, comes in and fights the first two rounds at a blistering pace. And Tony is able to fight back only intermittently, though effectively when he does. And he's going to have to throw a left hook behind that right hand, too, because he's trying to land it all with the right hand. And the, the pace is just a lot faster than he wants. And you can see him landing the ropes down to support himself. And Vasily got the left to the belly again, and Giroff throws at close range as Tony backed him off for a moment with the right to the chest. But again, the fast pace, Giroff's hands releasing at a rate that Tony just can't match. If Vasily Giroff can handle James Tony's big shots, he's going to wear him out at this rate. Yeah, and Tony's not a particular really big dangerous puncher, but he's a good puncher. But at the pace that Giroff is setting right now, it looks pretty rough for James. There's a low blow from Giroff. Steve Smoker tells him to keep it up. Giroff lands low again. Smoker didn't see that one. Tony comes back with a body shot and a right. A lot of action here. I'm surprised that James hasn't thrown his left hook more. In the first two rounds of the fight, Vasily Giroff is averaging 90 punches a round, and he's making James Tony work. Irish Mickey Ward of Lowell, Mass, one and one in his battles against Arturo Gatti. And now that the deal has been made for the third fight, and Mickey doesn't like the deal, he's got new incentives. Low blow by Giroff there. And this one should give James Tony five minutes to recover. Have up to five, James. Take your time. Five minute clock. Now this time, comes. This comes after Giroff threw 102 clock. punches in the I second round and rounds landed and 12 solid shots to the Next body. Next one is a point. That's it. Here's Next a look. Next one's a point. Blood curdling. That was a low, low blow. Well, and it's the second one that Smoker saw, but he did not deduct a point. Instead, he warned Giroff that the next time around a point would be deducted. He could have done so this time. Good night, Emmanuel. He's giving him a break, but I don't think it's going to help him if he does it again. I think he's going to be very crucial and probably take points away from him. And Tony comes right back out with aggression, firing right hands to try to show Giroff he's not diminished in any way by the low blow. And a big right hand by Tony, and Giroff keeps going, although without any balance. Tony jumps on it. 
Giroff's hands are down, and Tony takes advantage to land. But now James has to take a walk. Right on the belt line by Giroff. He's going to have trouble keeping him up, Manny. Yes. And, then, and he's got the fight pretty much in his going in his way is control for him. But if he starts shooting those low punches, it can be crucial in this fight here because it's not going to be a one sided fight to score. Straight right hand by Tony. Very effective. He's so yeah. quick. And if James started coming back to the left hook, he'll really have something going for himself. So far, Giroff taking Tony's punch as well. Trade at close range, Tony's quicker. Yes. His Tony, hands are and quick. It, and much shorter punches, too. Good right hand. That right hand wobbled Giroff momentarily, but Giroff comes plunging forward again, trying to keep the pressure on Tony. Giroff's left eye beginning to swell slightly. Yeah, he's got those high cheekbones. Good body shot by Giroff. But the effect of punches and, uh, coming from Tony. And a hard left hand by Giroff and a straight left to the belly drives Tony back into the ropes. Good quick right hand counter by Tony. Both guys have shown what it is they can do and what they like to do in the first three rounds. and a right by Jira. Another left to the body, again, right on the belt line. Smoker was in perfect position. Let him have it. Finally, Jira slips a punch. And Tony <laughs> winks at the announcers as he goes back to his corner. Hey, look. Hey, look. James you is a warrior. got more head on the inside, partner. You know what I'm saying? Where's that end swell at? Drop your hands, drop your hands. You gotta move your head on the inside, partner. You know what I'm saying? And look, you yeah. gotta throw more punches. Yeah. Just don't be standing there, you know what I'm saying, man? Yeah. Just like we worked on in the gym. Follow me? Yep. Okay. Angles are set in room, all right? Don't move straight back, off in your angles, all right? Ready, Roach. Keep using those angles and keep turning this guy. You feel the rope's coming up for when you get off him, right. okay, son? All right? I guess, you, baby. Okay. Now, here's what Smoker's watching on the low blows, Emmanuel. Yes, a lot of those blows are low. They're not dangerously low, but the fact that they're going low and it's up to the referee. The one that he got the warning on was just obviously very badly low. But if he continues to punch like that, it may be a big, big factor on him going down the stretch, and I think he's going to do that more. Big connect advantage for Tony in round three. Had a huge round landing 36 to a punches to only 12 for Jiroff. Power connects through three. They're about equal. 51 out of 164 Jiroff. Tony, 54 out of 104. Thrillingly accurate. Harold, how do you have it through three? <laughs> okay, Jim. 29-28. Two rounds to one. James lights out Tony. Jim, I thought he did enough to outpunch Vasily Jiroff and win well, the first out, round. A big second round for Jiroff, but then Tony came back after that low blow and certainly won the third round. Jim, I gotta tell you something that I see that I don't know if anybody else sees. James Tony is wearing a mouthpiece that just absolutely looks too big for him. Now, I mean, his face is absolutely distorted, and this has been since the opening bell. I, I don't know. It, you know, he may be having a hard time breathing through that mouthpiece. What do you think, uh, Emmanuel, about the mouthpiece of Tony? Mm, no comment. <laughs> so you think I'm it's quite, okay? Quite, 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 he, must, he must be used to it. I'm quite sure. You wouldn't go into a big fight with a new mouthpiece. At least I hope not. Well, you certainly wouldn't expect a guy who's fought 70 fights to go into a fight with a new mouthpiece. No, he's got to know what he's doing. But it does look too big. I agree with her. Yeah, but it's every fighter's comfort zone. Maybe big is what he likes. <laughs> Now, do you think Giroff has been inhibited at all by the danger of throwing low punches and getting penalized? I think it may have slowed him down a lot from throwing and he got his whole attack off because I know that they were concentrating a lot on trying to hurt James to the body. 
James keeps his body with his arms wrapped around him, so it's very difficult to penetrate his body. Though. You can almost see Jirov concentrating on not letting his left hand drift as far down on the arc for that punch, but rather throwing it horizontally. And when he, get, when he just takes his focus off of what he was doing to do, to concentrate on that, it may put his whole battle plan off. Just enough for James to be effective. Tony has countered with uppercuts, but much more effectively with straight right hands. Giroff's most effective stuff has been, as usual, his left hand to the body. Want to see a style contrast fight? Giroff Tarver would be interesting. They're both tall southpaws, but one goes upstairs and one goes downstairs. Both of them southpaws, so it would be a very good fight. Very interesting. Tony measuring his performance now in round four without the same incentive that existed in round three when he was coming back from the low blow early. Giroff has managed to dominate the action here. Well, you still have the age factor with James, and he's had a lot of fights on him, big fights, too. Physical activity in round four favors Giroff. Tony catches him with a good left hook counter to finish out the round. Hey, listen, look, you gotta keep beating on this guy, man. He's running out of gas, you know what I'm saying? He can't be going up and down in the weight like he's going, but you gotta beat on him, though. You know what I'm saying? All right, let's back this guy up a little bit there. Let's take charge this round, okay, son? All right? Come on. I want you to break this guy down. Let's go to work. Him, okay? okay? He's ready to go. Round five, baby. We need some money. James Tony says to Freddie Roach, I'm breaking him down. You agree, Emmanuel? Yeah, I think he's been more effective with his short punches. And, uh, and, and you know, both guys are telling, telling the other corner the same thing. But the real, the, the real key punch to me is James Tony's left hook. If he can ever start landing a hook, I think he's going to hurt Giroff a little better than even the right hand. Well, for some fighters, it's really hard to land the left hook against a southpaw because the angle. But of course, Giroff squares up and makes himself available it, it more get, than most southpaws. He gets square and he's got his right hand down because he's always looking for right hands. He's never looking for the left hook. Box numbers through four find Tony landing 108 out of 245. That's a great connect percentage of 44 percent. Giroff 86 out of 326. James Tony lands a lot of punches for a counter puncher because he lets his hands go freely. Yes, he's landing clean, short, effective punches directed to the center of Giroff's face. And so, as a matter of fact, as the fight goes on, Giroff might swell up a lot more. Only 25 times in CompuBox history has a fighter landed more than 400 punches in a championship fight. One man, and only one, has done that four times. That's James Tony. The most punches ever landed in a championship fight, that's Vasily Giroff. That's why we expected a great fight tonight. Uh, that's right. A trade again. Wailing to the body, Giroff remains accurate through the last two rounds, getting to the center of the breadbasket. Tony still countering brilliantly. Tony's landing short, accurate punches, but Giroff is still making him fight at a pace that I don't think a man his age wants to fight at. Giroff's face is busting up, though. Trickle of blood from the right nostril, both eyes swelling around the high cheekbones. There will be work to be done in Giroff's corner for cut man James Ispriduli as well as for Tommy Brooks and Thel Torrance, who both know a thing or two about it themselves. Good combination by Giroff in the center of the ring. Takes one to give one. Come on, 
Shots backing Tony off again. Good left hook by Tony. But Jiroff landing two to take one as he keeps throwing to the body. This is a war. This is an all out war. God. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Listen, I'm telling you, champ, the only way to win this thing and to keep your title, man, you beat on this sucker, man. Okay. You can't be standing out there fucking looking, man. You got to beat on his ass. Finish this guy, okay? You put two together, it's there for you. He's about to go. He's about to go any time, JT. Come back with your head, man. Nice. Now, nice. James, the key to that round was backing him up. He can't fight going back, my son. Let's watch Tony throw the uppercut, scoring there. And those kind of punches really cause your eye to close up very easy. Those glazing shots like that cause a lot of injury to the eyes. No question about who looks the worst for wear. As the result of the action to this point in the bout, round six begins. Power punches in the fifth round, though. Tony, 18 out of 31. Giroff, 20 out of 50. And you heard Tommy Brooks asking for even more activity from Giroff. Go hit him. Beat on him, he said. I'm not sure how much more Giroff can let his hands go in this situation. Takes a hard right hand and, and, you know, and, he, and, and a left and a right. And, and he's not setting down between rounds, too. So. I only know one guy who effectively did that was Big George Foreman. But George didn't waste that much energy. George picked his punches. The very most relaxed punches. fighter I've seen in the modern era. Yes. Very relaxed man, but I think that Giroff would be better off if he would sit down and take a rest. You can see the consternation in Tommy Brooks and Fel Torrance's eyes. Well, at least you can see it in Tommy's eyes. Fel Torrance is such a flatliner, you, you barely know that his fighter's fighting. He's emotion free over there. I guess he used to being so quiet working with Eddie Futch all those years as assistant to Eddie. Let Eddie do most of the talking. letting them go for a fight with this much physical activity leaning all over each other smokers let them fight oh what a display of counter shots by james tony this is brilliant stuff Tony grinning as he controls the action. And he's fighting where he wants to be, where he can stay in the ropes and don't have to use his legs. <laughs> Tony chatting with his corner people as Giroff bangs chopping right hands off his head. Solid shots from Tony. Giroff taking him well and coming and forward. right back. Giroff has never backed up. A ceiling Jiroff only knows one way to fight. He comes straight forward, digging to the belly, taking shots upstairs. And I wonder if Tony's strength and stamina are going to hold up against Jiroff's continued effort, effort, effort. Jiroff has never backed up. Even though he's been hit with great shots, he always comes right back, still making James work. Easy fight to score. No, nope, no. Nope. What a round. Very good, very good. They got the cruiserweight version of Gaddy Ward brewing here. It's turned out to be one tremendous fight. No one has been hurt seriously still. In the small room at Foxwoods. And Perfect Ten Magazine Girl of the Decade, Ashley Degenford, has won a lot of fans between rounds. <laughs> Delivering the round card action with the same intensity with which Vasily Giroff pursues James Tony's Rick Gage. 
Ashley says if I can flirt with him just a little bit, I think they'll remember the perfect 10. That's the flirt. You got to move your head, you just can't walk to the guy straight. Yes, sir. Move your head, baby. Come on, guys, let's go. Happy. One good kill. Like the first round. Like the first round. Okay. I warned him. Power connects in round six by CompuBox estimate. Jira, 15 out of 65. Throwing a lot, but that's only a 23% connect percentage. Tony, 27 out of 47. Phenomenal 57% accuracy, and a lot of them hard connects to the face. Harold, how do you have it halfway through? <laughs> okay, Jim, I got it also a very, very close fight. 57-57, three rounds apiece. I got it all even to this point. All the, all the odd rounds to James Tony. all the even rounds to Vasily Jiram. Two, four, and six to Jiram. That sixth round, Vasily Jiram was just too busy. I thought I evened it up in the sixth round. But, Jim, you know, we talk about defense. Very rarely do you give a guy credit for defense. But James Tony gives you half the body to swing at. Great defense from behind that shoulder. Much like Floyd Mayweather did last week. Keeps that shoulder high, you can't hit him. Well, certainly Tony is by far the superior defender to Giroff, given that even Tommy Brooks acknowledged yesterday, hey, Vasily's offense is his defense. Yes. Lest you think that Vasily Giroff will wilt under this punishment, won't like the pain of what James Tony's dealing out to him, just remember that Kazakh national boxing coach Alex Apachinsky raised Jiroff on a diet of such strange exercises as putting him in a closed hallway with German shepherds piped to the gills or dropping him in the middle of a lake three miles from shore and paddling away. These are the kinds of things Jiroff learned on, and it's hard to imagine he's going to wilt under any punishment. Yeah, but one solid right hand to the head can change all of that. It could. <laughs> it could indeed. It could be that Batinsky back in Kazakhstan saying, well, I didn't tell him about that. Yeah, but so far, it, it seems like he's wristed all of it and continually come right back and got the, the best of every one of the exchanges at the tail end of it. Giroff throwing and throwing, Tony picking his spots and hitting him. Brilliant, tough, accurate counter-punching by Tony, who lands a big left hook upstairs. The Russian Tiger keeps coming forward, stalking, stalking, trying to get to Tony's breadbasket. It's astonishing, Emmanuel, yeah. that men can do this. Yes, and then all of the blows that Giroff is taking, he still comes right back and is pushing James Tony to the limit. At the beginning of the evening, the James Tony against Vasily Giroff might be an early candidate for fight of the year, and this fight is building its own legend one round at a time so far. Giroff threw 92 punches in the seventh round, his high for the fight. Tony threw 78 punches in the seventh round, his high for the fight. It wasn't quite the ninth round of Gaddy Ward one, but it was memorable stuff. Another low Neutral blow. Point. This is going to cost you off a point. Low blow. Going to cost one him a point, point and it's going to put him within two low one blows point, of low a possible blow. disqualification. Stay up. Stay up. Stay up. Good advice. You need time? You sure? Okay. Regular clock. Regular clock. It is a huge mouthpiece. <laughs> it is. And now the last time Tony had to take time off after a low blow, he came back and dominated the round after that. Seemed to be energized by it. But here he gets raked by another body shot as he comes out of the corner and seems to be more measured. Look at the quick hands release yep. for James Tony. Short, short right hands. Veteran 
boxing promoter Dan Goosen has his third promotional business at play now. A brand new partnership with Southern California real estate mogul Ronnie Tudor. And he's built the whole organization around his belief that James Tony is going to rise back to the superstar level. He felt like the proper way to incentivize James was to say, James, I'm going to ride on your stardom. And Tony has responded to that. He says, I'm going to take the big goose to the top. Jiroff having another big round now, trying to get back the point that he's lost for the low blow deduction. Tony lands two huge yep, right hands. Here comes James Tony right back. And here comes Jiroff stalking the body again. Jiroff just never tires of that. Never, never tires. He's putting up a lot of pressure. James, James is fighting a good fight, but James doesn't want to fight at this tempo. Big left hook for Tony. And the little right hand combo. Jiroff keeps coming. It's a huge round for Jiroff if he can win it because he will avert the one point deficit that would have come from the deduction for the low blow and with that last big left, Jiroff just may have sealed the round. James Tony is very, up, very tired now. Hey, Don, drop me in. You gotta pick the face up, okay? Yeah. Get that tongue in. Don't squeeze it. I'm not. You gotta pick the face up. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Hey, look, we depend on this guy to run out of the gas, man. But you gotta beat on him, you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. All right. TT. You're doing those combinations, they're beautiful out there, okay? okay. Uh, hey, don't stand in front of this guy. You gotta move that head for me, okay, son? All right? Yes, sir. Use those angles, okay? Come on now, JT. Right. Ah. Pick it up a little bit more. Right, I want more. Low blow. Yep. No. Tony right hand. Power punches in round eight. Giroff 18 out of 57. Tony 18 out of 44. Going into the ninth round, Vasily Giroff's already thrown 654 punches in the fight. Averaging more than 80 punches per round. Fast pace, forcing Tony to fight at a pace not in keeping with his lifestyle of the past 10 years. But James says he's in the best shape he's ever been in, and so far he's holding up. He's in good shape. Uh, I think the tempo right now is still taking its toll on him now. Particularly at the end of the last round, I could see it when he went back to the corner. And now his legs begin to talk. Yeah. Not at all. Slip. Not a knockdown. Tony slipping right back into position for Jiroff to bust him across the chops. And Tony goes to the body with good effect. Straight right hand, busting Jiroff right on the chin. Jiroff's eyes have held up into the ninth. Yep. Looks like his vision will make it through the fight. Again, Tony's activity level drops as Giroff bashes into the ropes and starts to go to work. And again, Tony finds his opportunities to counter. Some of the snap seems to be coming out of Tony's punches. Yes. And that's what happens, of course, when somebody beats you to the body and beats you to the body over and over and over. And he's using his shoulders to move Tony around. He's just making it a very physical fight. James has landed some tremendous shots, but after every one of those exchanges, Giroff keeps coming back and making him work, making him work, making him work, making him work. What a war of wills. Both guys fighting their fight. And he's smothering Tony right now. 
shortening the distance, limiting the damage of Tony's counter shots. Jiroff just keeps beating him, beating him, beating him to the body. And Tony keeps coming back, but He's hitting James fewer James. and fewer punches. Yes, and James is getting hit on his shoulders, his elbows, everywhere. Well, if you saw the movie Phone Booth, it wasn't as exciting as that. One spot. Breathe. Hey, look. I'll get the nose. Put that thing on. It's tough round coming up, bro. Look, you, you can't stand in front of this guy. You got to move your head, you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. All right, this is like we worked on the gym. It's nothing different. This ain't no different, except this is for real now. You know what I'm yes, saying? Sir. No different than the gym. Breathe this is for mouth. real, though. Breathe from your mouth. Look. You got to pick up the pace, too. You know what I'm saying? Beat on this guy. Hear me? OK? What's up, bro? Two okay. shots, man. More than Ten. one shot, baby. We need to pick it up. Now, here. Run him. Run a combination for me, just like on the mitts for me, OK? Yes, sir. You run a combination off this. And here, keep stepping forward with the combination. All right? Keep the pressure on this guy. You back him up. Right. He's out of there, James. Push All right? James, he's looking for a reason to quit. Give him one. OK, son? Come on now. Win the round. That's all I'm going to do. Tonight's okay. official scorers on, are Glenn Feldman of Connecticut, Melvina Lathan of New York, and Steve Weisfeld of New Jersey. Let's see how unofficial scorer Harold Letterman has it at ringside after nine. Okay, Jim. You know, somehow or another, I just can't take it away from the effective aggressiveness of Vasily Girov. Five, three, one, even, 86, 84, Vasily Girov. I mean, basically, he's been coming forward, pinning James Tony on the ropes for the last four rounds. I just outworked him. That's all there is to it. Since the Girov a clean, effective punching. Round eight, by the way, becomes 9-9 nine, nine, since Jirov won the round 10-9 and loses a point on a low blow. Tony seemed to wobble Jirov momentarily, but Jirov barely even went backward. Just kept leaning forward. James Tony is a true warrior. And this is not an easy fight to score. Nope. Is losing snap as well. Oh, yeah. He's... Both fighters justifiably tiring. If Jurok would ever just take a break and lay back for a minute, Tony would take complete control. Right hand by Tony wobbled Jurok. Jurok takes three more shots in a row. Tony's big opportunity right here. Yes, it is. This is the best chance James Tony's had to win this fight. Yeah, and his left hook is a big, big shot for most of the set. In fact, he knocked out Michael Nunn with the left hook. And Jirov is trying to protect himself the only way he knows how, by going forward and throwing more punches. But he doesn't have any power in his punches now. Does Tony have enough power left to get rid of him? Tony's got so much experience in pro fights that he can fight off experience for a round or two and do things instinctively without even thinking about him. He's hitting Giroff more or less at will. This has been a big round for Tony. 45 seconds left in the round. Giroff now tries to produce an energy burst, and that's what Tony's done up to this point. Punch is not coming from Giroff now. Tony's hurt him in this round. Four men only. An amazingly aggressive offensive fight from both fighters. That's the Big left hook by Tony. And the right hand, and the bell saves Jirov as he wobbles against the ropes. Tony should throw more left hooks. You got two rounds, though, baby. Yes, sir. Drop it in. Drop it in. Two rounds. You're going to have to fight. Look. He's looking for one shot, man, to stop him. You know what I'm saying? Go and give it to him. You got him over your head, baby. 
You got him on your head. You can't stand on the inside and not do nothing. Yes, All right, now let's pay, let's back this guy up like he did. Hey, walk him down now here. You had him, okay? You don't always let him off the hook, okay? All right, you heard him. Keep walking him down with the head movement, okay? Right. Walking down with the head movement. Drop it. Here's the end of the round action as Tony landed that huge left hook, and you heard Emmanuel Stewart say, James should throw more left hooks. What an amazing round for Tony. Giroff landed 15 out of 104 punches in that round. Tony, 44 out of 77. 60% of his punches. So clearly, James Tony won the 10. And what looks like a fairly even fight coming to the 11. Kind of fight that's likely to raise the reputation of both fights. Yes, both guys are going to have a lot of credibility after this fight here. James went to the uh, corner to end of, the, I think, the ninth round, totally exhausted, and comes back and fights such a great fight the tenth round. It's just a warrior inside of him. And he's, got, and, and, and he's got a lot of experience. Tony Brooks says to Giroff, you can't just stand in front of him without moving your head. Giroff says, yes, sir, then goes right back in and does the same thing. But he's doing the best that he can. He's trying to win this fight just on outworking James Tony and wearing him down. No precision punching, no boxing, not even power punching, just trying to outwork him. And when you do that with a crazy guy like James, you're going to have to pay a price, even if you win the fight. Tony looks the fresher of the two. As they come down the stretch in the 11th, that in itself is amazing. And Giroff levels Tony with the right hand. Tony not throwing back. Giroff has no energy. And he backs out of the corner on his own. Now James begins to counter again and catches Giroff with a big uh, left hook. Now yeah, here James comes back. The round has been mostly Tony, but Giroff nearly knocked Tony down. And is liable to win the round on that alone unless James yeah. produces another big rally. And here goes Giroff back to the body. Fighters are married. I don't see how the wives can watch it. Oh, this is a brutal fight here. And the thing about it, Giroff can box when he wants to, too, from his big amateur bag. I've seen him get on his toes and box. But the strategy in this fight was just to try to just clean wear James Tony down. What a courageous yeah. round by Vasily Giroff. He looked nearly out of it at the end of the 10th. He has come back and dominated the 11th round. This is a, an act of will by Giroff to take this round from Tony. Unbelievable round, especially when you look at how bad he was hurt. But he's never, never backed up. Even when he was hurt, he comes right back in. Prize the courage of these two fighters. What a show. 11 rounds down, one round to go. That's one, baby. He's losing the fight. You be careful. All right, this is your. Put it on. Last round. He's losing the fight. Don't get careless. Box. Okay, JT. Now here, listen to me. All right, championship of the world, right here, this round. Okay, you gotta put this guy on his ass. I'm serious now. Okay. All right. All right. He, he out hustles you that round. You don't let him out hustle you. Come on, baby. Come on. Okay. Freddie Roach told his fighter man. the truth. Well, it's going to be hard to get out and out work a guy like, you know, Joe. The only thing he can do is shoot power punches and hope that he can knock him out by putting everything in his punches. Give it all you got. Hey, this is your life, son. Just don't get your in your title. Let's go. Tommy Brooks says to Vasily Giroff, this is your life. Three minutes. The fight of the year comes down to the 12th round. In the 11th round, Giroff threw 100 punches and landed 30. Tony was 36 out of 68. Harold, how do you have it through 11? Okay, Jim, 105, 103, 6, 4, 1 even, Vasily Giroff. Jim, I'm 
got to tell you, if James Tony lost this fight, it was because of six, seven, eight, and nine, where Jira was just too aggressive, took that big lead, and Tony just couldn't catch up. By the way, in that 11th round, when Tony went back, Steve Spoker pointed to the canvas. I think it was a slip. I mean, there's no question that this ring is wet, and, and Tony did slip back. But still, it all Jira won. Well, you heard what both trainers had to say. You know what's at stake. If you haven't paid much attention to the cruiserweight division before now, maybe you will in the future. This would be the reason. Right hand by Jiro. Momentarily stunned Tony. Right hand by Tony catches Jiro flush. Crowd on its feet. Well, some of them. <laughs> Such a small room, you don't have yeah. to stand up. Chapter one. Yes. <laughs> I want to see another one of these here. Forget going after Roy Jones Jr. I want to see these two fight again. Harold, do you have it even after 12? Absolutely, Jim. 6 5 1 even for Jiro over at Rasbo. 113, 113. I got it a draw. Wow. That's the import of the knockdown in the last 30 seconds of the fight. Here you are, Emmanuel. Yes, totally, totally exhausted. James got so much experience that even though he was tired, he's just fighting off his experience and doing things instinctively. The CompuBox forecast for the fight predicted a split decision, oh. one point win for Tony in a brilliant fight. Oh. Well, the brilliant fight part of it has certainly come true. Unbelievable series of shots that sent Vasily Jiroff to the canvas, but by the time he got up, he had no more time left on the clock, did Tony, to finish him off. James Tony connected on 380 punches in the fight. 411 for Jiroff. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official particular. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards. Glenn Feldman scores the contest, 117 to 109. Steve Weisfeld has it, 116 to 110. 
and Melvina Layton scores it 117 to 109 for the winner by unanimous decision and new RBF Cruiserweight Champion of the World, James Lights Out Tony. So the judges give victory to Tony for his brilliant display of counter punching. And James Tony has resurrected his career with a magnificent performance against Vasily Giroff.